Well, it's not very nice out, but we're getting some sanding done, a little bit of fitting done. Got these guys right here. This is the those little spice racks I was telling you about. Remember we've uh, started those guys? It's just kind of like a little, I don't know. Like a lot of the wood here is too wet to varnish, it's too ambiently cold to varnish, although it's nice and warm right now. Uh, but that ain't gonna last as soon as I go into my berth, it'll cool right down. This stuff takes a while to cure, so it being below freezing, I don't wanna risk it. Uh, I'm just gonna keep working on this wood stuff and setting it off. Um, we're gonna sand and smooth these guys. They're already pretty smooth, but once they're done, they'll get varnished. This will get painted white, and then it'll slide right inside like that, sort of. Okay, a little bit better than that. I gotta work on that too. Back in the village now. Man, snow's finally stopped at least for a little bit, but it's freaking cold. Play this record as frequently as possible. There you go, Mike. You got a show going. Yeah. <laughs> time I got off the water, eh, mate? Wow. My family. <laughs> so this guy here is uh, Mike's most recent piece. And during, you remember the storm episode that we had a little while ago? And it was some rough times for both of us, you know, dragging anchor and dealing with the bay and chaos. And this is out of chaos. The out of chaos piece that he made of that. Quickly went to the bench, put a bench together and carved this. It was already waiting for me, so. And it's a just a post, the beauty of a, a newborn uh, against the turmoil of the surroundings, you know, with a wave coming over her head. <laughs> All right, the little spice rack things are, well, they're not really making a drastic change here on the boat, um, but they're looking pretty good, nice and sanded and smooth. Unfortunately, I can't varnish them right now because it's too cold in here. So we're gonna move on to some, uh, a little bit more fun stuff. And one of the fun things I just got from uh, Claudia, Claudia and Daniel, electric kettle. Um, now this might seem really simplistic, but sometimes the most energy efficient solution is also the most simple solution. Um, now, you know, you guys know I'm a huge fan of my induction cooktop and it is awesome. I won't lead you astray there. It is awesome. However, when boiling water just to make coffee, it is not the most efficient method. The most efficient method is this little tiny electric kettle. So we got a nice little small one. This one is a, as you can tell, a gooseneck. For those of you who don't know, goosenecks are just like regular kettles, but they have this thin little thing that gives you a lot better control when pouring hot water, which 99% of the time doesn't matter. But what for me, when I'm making my pour overs, it is fantastic and it allows me to give a much better control on my pour over coffees, which gives me a tastier coffee. And with tastier coffee, more things get built here on this boat. Tastier coffee is the fuel that runs this ship, as well as solar power and potentially wind power soon. But mostly caffeine, mostly good coffee. All right, well, talking about the uh, AC power and power savings um, to jumping over with uh, batteries and battery maintenance. I want to give a huge thank you to Scott uh, for sending this guy out. It's not the first thing I've seen sent out by him. Oh, this is a bit of a complicated process, so maybe I'll dig into it a little bit. Because it's taken me a while for me to like wrap my head around it. I needed a balance charger for these batteries. Um, because of lithium polymer, when you're charging them, 
Um, they're not self-leveling the way that lead acid is. So you need to uh, balance every cell. Now I have, as you remember, on this dirty, dirty battery, these are the BMSs. These are battery monitoring systems. Essentially, they're like a safety circuit. If one of the cell reaches its maximum or minimum voltage, it's a big relay and it will cut this like 100 amp relay that's built into here. Now, once that happens, basically it cuts the entire battery off. And that's well and good when all the cells are relatively close to one another, but it doesn't balance them out. It doesn't um, charge them in such a way or, or discharge them in such a way that all the cells get to the same exact voltage. So over time, they drift a little bit from one another. Um, now, day to day, not a big problem, but like on a regular basis, you need to get in there and you need to get with one of these guys. Now this one is the only one on the market that uh, is a 12S capable. So uh, most of the time they go up to one, to, to six cells in series. Now this is a 12 cell series battery bank. So I needed one that does, as they say in the uh, model RC world, high voltage, which is 12 cell, which is only 44.4 volts nominal essentially a 48 volt pack. Now, the other thing that this thing needs is it needs a DC power source. When you know it, it doesn't come out of the box with its own power source. So you have to buy an extra power source on the side, which is where Scott came in. He sent us out this guy. This is an AC to DC um, power source and it's also adjustable. So there's this knob here that allows you to adjust what voltage and a little screen. Right now it's putting out 15.4 volts. It's not crazy high uh, amperage, but it's okay. It does all right for my per particular system. And uh, the AC fan is kicking off pretty good right now. So right now I'm just doing a little test. Um, as you'll notice, I only have two leads going from my DC power source to my charger and from my charger to my battery. And this is only one half of my battery charging right now. So we got it up at 46.47 volts. It's been on for four minutes now. It's put in uh, just on 0.2 amps there so far, 0.2 amp hours. Um, so yeah, it's just trickling along, doing its job. And we're at 3.5 amps consistent power input right now. So it's not a killer amount of juice, but it's something. In order to get a good charge, you need a wire lead going to each and every one of those cells. Um, so I need to figure out how to get this connection here, which is my high volt connection, which has more than 12 connectors on it, down to my connector right here. So these are the ones I've wired into the battery bank. And they're a 13 serial pin connector. I don't know what they're all called, man. There's so many of these little different types of connectors. Um, ADP? I don't know. Anyways. Basically, I'm just gonna have to make my own dongle there and then that will allow me to get a nice balance charge. Right now, all she can do is the top voltage, which is uh, 50.4 volts uh, cap out. So that's it. I'm gonna have to hit up Amazon or eBay or something and track down the exact serial connector for that because the only female side to those connectors I have so far are all soldered directly to my BMSs and I don't feel like chopping up a BMS because I really need those. Are you scratching your head yet? Because it took me a while to wrap my head around and uh, it's not even that complicated. I'm just, I'm just not an expert at this, you know? All right, yeah, so far so good. We're getting to a voltage now, 48 volts and we put in uh, 3.2 amp hours so far. Now it's climbed up to 5.5 amp hours. I'm finding the power source, even though I did send it to 24, has dragged itself down to 15.2. Now 15 is the cutoff for this input on this guy. So I have to assume that the charger here is really just pulling it down to what it will accept and then laying off of it. Um, maybe down the road, I'll get a bigger power source, but for my purposes, five amps is more than enough to just um, do my balance charging and do the maintenance charging basically for all these battery packs, as well as doing some rescuing on the ones that get damaged. And I'm planning on running everything 12S um, going forward on this boat. So whether I get new packs or I'm rescuing old ones, it doesn't really matter. This is really gonna come in handy. So I want this system to be clean and organized, not all over here while I'm making dinner. Instead, I wanna put it back there. So now we have to plan out where that's going to go. Right.
I think, guys, guys, I guess what I'm just getting at here is that uh, winters on a boat in this boat project, well, they're not great. Last winter was, was really bad. This winter's been better. Um, it's also been worse. I mean, this winter we've had a lot more sunshine. We've also had bigger storms and we've had more snow than last winter. So it's hard to say for sure what the deal is, but I do know that next winter <laughs> I better have a better plan. Uh, I want to do some house sitting next winter. I want to make sure that I have the money to travel a bit next winter uh, because yeah, there's no other sailors here, you know, and I think there's a reason for that. I think, you know, sailing has a season and uh, most sailors, you know, if they stay on their boat all year round, they know kind of how to prepare for that. And uh, I don't, I'm learning. So, uh, speaking of learning, I'm actually making a kimchi for the first time. This is a recipe I stole from Free Range Sailing. Um, probably like my favorite, one of my favorites uh, on YouTube right about now. They're pretty awesome in all the ways that I'm not. <laughs> they have a small manageable boat. They're very experienced. They're doing all kinds of things I'm not doing, but I'd like to be like, you know, travel a bit more like them one day. So maybe we'll get to that point. Maybe we'll get to the point where I can uh, be more comfortable here in the winter time and uh, well, windows and proper heat and all four walls will certainly help that. But power management, power production, wind turbines, potentially more solar on the roof and the whole battery bank working and operating as it should. All of those things will produce a much nicer place to live. So that's it, that's it. I've rambled enough this episode. Hopefully this kimchi will come out great and we'll enjoy it. And uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow.